I love 3ds Max and I'm always looking for a better, faster workflow to work with it. I wonder if there is all-in-one solution that gives me a real-time preview, fast outputs, both images and animations, and realistic results at once. If that makes the two of us, watch this video to find out how good the free real-time ray tracing renderer D5 Render is, and it might turn out to be the ideal tool for your 3D production workflow. I've tried D5 Render for a while now, and I find this software extremely easy and powerful for architects, landscape and interior designers, especially those who are using 3ds Max. So let's get started. To show everyone how good D5 is, let's jump to some ready-made scenes before the tutorial. The best part is that the scenes are free of charge to download from their form, so you can just search for the one you find interesting and download it to your computer. You can learn a lot from them. Let's say we'll choose this one. We need to click on the link and then download the files. I put the link to this scene in the description below the video. Save it to your computer. After it's downloaded, we need to unpack it. Here is what we've got. We can open the D5 file, which is in a DRS format. OK, let's see how the scene looks inside. Here we go. Let's take a look around. I need to say it looks better than I expected. So in the scenes, we have two cameras. We can easily switch between them. What I like the most about this is that we can learn so much from these ready-made scenes. We can use the I key to pick the material and get an idea of how it's created. We can move around the scene using the WASD keys on your keyboard and Q and E to move up and down. You can click on these icons to check the properties of the lights. Plenty of things to explore. I show you the interior scene as well. I put the link to this one as well in the description. We can check the used options, understand the workflow, and basically explore the scene. It is a huge advantage for people just starting with software like myself. We can see how this effect is done. The decals were used on the floor. We'll talk about it more later. Are you curious how this material was done? Not a problem. Pick the material and investigate it step by step. You can see that we can create groups that can be useful to keep the scene organized. Looking into these scenes is definitely a way to improve skills. Now let's say that I like this chair and I want it to have it in the assets library. No problem, just click on the object and use the add to local option. And here it is, easy and fast. OK, let's jump to 3ds Max and I will show you the workflow of using D5 Render. I'm using the free scene from Evermotion, so you can create your version of my image if you wish. I put the link to this in the description below the video. I will grab a few bits from here to have a base to work with. We don't need the slides in the window, so I will delete all of them to keep my scene clean. Great news! We don't need to have any plants in Max file, as we can add various plants from D5 library and most of them are available in the free version of the software. Add the very sky to the environment slot and create a camera. I adjusted the image with some simple adjustments and here is the result. As you have a scene ready, we can move to one of the coolest options in D5, Max Live Sync. To get this plugin that does the magic job, you can open the software, go to Workflow and download the suitable plugin. For me, it is 3ds Max, but there are plugins for other programs as well. Anyway, to synchronize D5 with 3ds Max, we have to click on this icon. And the process begins. Now, after the synchronization is finished, we can move around in 3ds Max and see changes in D5. For example, I move around the scene and I can preview in D5. So you can see that the workflow is pretty straightforward. Also, there are some additional options like Send Camera. So we can see that the camera is imported and we have it here. The same for lights. We can use Send Lights option and the lights from the scene are sent to D5. We can edit it from there as well. Plus, we can also export the entire scene to D5 and work independently from there. By the way, D5 is also compatible with SketchUp, Revit, Rhino, Archicad, Blender and C4D with a Live Sync plugin. So if you don't use Max, D5 could still be helpful for your workflow. Now let me show you how we can use D5 Render. Here is the final scene I created using the grid options we have available. First of all, I like the user-friendly interface. Everything is pretty straightforward. You may not know anything about the software, but still you will be able to intuitively work in it. Here we have a navigation bar. You can find here the assets library, which is pretty big. 
You can find here various animated particles, for example, fountain water, fireworks, flying balloons, etc. You can also find different materials and models, which I will show you more later on. Here we can find different tools like adding lights, creating paths tools, vegetation tools, and adding particles. It basically opens as assets library in the particles section. Anyways, next, we have options to render visualizations and animations. Plus, we can send different scenes to render using a render queue. Next, we have scene controls. Here we can find the model and materials tools. On another side, we have camera settings. Here, for example, we can change the focal length of the camera. It has also an option to use a clipping plane, which is pretty handy. And great that we have the debuff field effect available. Next, we can find different display modes. And at the end, we have navigation options. We can use either orbit or fly mode. In the list panel at the top, we have all the saved cameras. We can add a new scene here. Next, we have layers. So you can see that I have the plants on the SIT layer. The objects are listed below. On the right hand side, we have a sidebar. If we choose any object in the scene, the inspector tab will appear. Here, for instance, we can change its location, rotation, and size of it. We can also add an object to the layer or make some operations, such as duplicating, flipping, exporting, resetting, and so on. Next, we have an environment panel where we can work on skylight, but also change the weather conditions. And finally, the FX panel includes the post-production and options to create ZDEP, for example. As you know the interface, let me show you some cool options. First of all, the GI effect was improved a lot from the previous versions and the bounce lights looks good. You can see if, for example, in the shadows, so they are not completely black, but you can see different tones of grey. Also, the plants look semi-transparent when the light shines through, so the effect of indirect light looks pretty natural. Talking about lighting, Adjusting the skylight is pretty easy in D5, no rocket science at all. We can change the position of the sun by moving it here. With just a couple of clicks, we can create various scenarios. So we save quite some time, as we don't have to add an environmental map and the sun. If you want to change the position of the sun, we can use the north offset slider to correct the direction of a compass. If we click on the dots next to it, we can also change the month, day, and sun intensity and size. Anyway, we can type these values manually as well. Another method will be using HDRI. What I really like about this is that we can choose from some default HDRIs. But if we want, we can use our own files. Changing the types of lighting will of course need some post-production adjustments, like exposure for instance. You can create multiple scenarios, you just need to remember to apply the changes to a particular view. You have to click here on the refresh icon. Another thing I want to show you are the PBR materials. So I have here the material on the path as an example. The materials comes from the assets library. So basically, when we create any material, we need to choose its type. Here we have displacement, but there are way more. You can choose from the list. There is a new material in the 2.4 version called subsurface scattering that gives a transparency effect. Next, you can choose to use a map or just color as a diffuse. And then we have maps that we can add and adjust. They differ a bit depending on the material template you will choose. Anyway, by changing the slider, we can control how strong a particular effect is. We can adjust the UV of the map here. Real cool option is the round corners. You can make smooth edges from the position of the material. No need to apply the option to every object separately. You can see the effect here. Another time-saving feature is batch important PBR textures. So we can select multiple maps and they will get inserted into corresponding slots automatically. Awesome! Now we can adjust the settings if needed and the material is ready to use. The thing I'm gonna show you now is mind-blowing. You can change the weather with one click. I decreased the exposure so you can see the changes better. So we can add clouds just by turning on the option. Of course, there is a possibility to adjust results. We can change the amount of clouds, for example, but also their thickness, density, and height. We can easily turn the effect off if we want to have a clear sky. Another results we can create is fog. We can turn it on with one click. Then we can adjust the results change its color, intensity, height, and so on. The next option is the wind, which I will show you in a sec. But first, the option to create a rainy or snowy scene with just one click. As an example, I will add rain. 
Here we go. We have a rainy scene ready. It's awesome, isn't it? We can also control the puddles. I changed the view so you can see it better. Here are the puddles. We can now increase the effect. This is pretty cool. I wish to have something like this in Corona or V-Ray. Life will be way easier. Anyway, now let's get into the wind effect. The first thing you need to know is that if you want this effect to work, you need to use specific models. The ones with this icon. I will add these three as an example. So we just need to choose the model we want and then click on the place we want it to be positioned. I will leave only the three I've just added so you can see easily how the effect works. If you want to preview the wind option, make sure you have real time turned on. Anyway, you can see how the tree is moving. The more moving objects we will add in animation, the more natural it will look. Now let me walk you quickly through the available model assets. In the nature category, we can find a bunch of plants, rocks, etc. They are organized in a very clear way. I like it. We have also characters. We have people standing, sitting, walking, basically everything we need. I won't show you everything as it will take too much time, but I will show you the ones that, in my opinion, are the most important. Also, we have plenty of furniture models to fill up the interior spaces, like sofas, tables, chairs, beds and so on. You can also find accessories and lamps, which are definitely needed to add a story to the image. But you can also find models that can fill up your exteriors, like buildings for example. They will be good for the backgrounds. The decals are pretty cool. I used one of them here. So we can add some broken bricks walls to the building, some road signs and line markings to the asphalt, footprints and so on. The ones I use are the fallen leaves. And lastly, interior parallax. It is a pretty great solution to quickly create interiors for buildings that don't have a specific design. We have two categories, commercial and residential. I will show you quickly how it works. Choose the object and click where you want to place it. You can move it manually, but I will show you the new option in the 2.4 version. Right-click on the object and choose to drop vertically, so it will be dropped to the floor. Anyways, in the inspector, we have some options we can use. Not only you can change the position, rotation and scale as in other objects, but also we can adjust the lighting so how bright or dark the interior will be. We can also change the intensity and temperature of this. Now, I will show you the scattering options. This is how I did the grasses and the trees in the background. As you have the option chosen, you need to select the objects. I will select some grasses. You can adjust the radius so how large your brush will be. Density size of objects, the randomness. And also, you can use the Align to Terrain option if you wish. And now, you can start painting. It's a bit laggy for me as I don't have a good enough GPU on my PC, however, it still works, so not bad. By the way, the difference between the brush and scatter is that the scatter tool is the maximum radius the objects are filled within the whole selected face. Ok, if you want to make some changes and delete something, we can use Erase tool. Here the same, you can set up the radius. If you click here, you will turn on the clean tool, which will erase all models drawn with the brush and scatter tools in the current range at once. The workflow is the same as with brush. And the last option here is the path tool. We can use it for creating hedges along the path for instance. I will choose this one. And now we can draw the path. When it's done, click done. And now you will see all the options we have to edit it. So we can increase the number of objects making our hedge dancer. We can add some randomization as well. So we can basically use just one object and create a pretty natural looking hedge. We can also create different style rendering using AO, Z-Depth and Outline modes. Basically, we just need to turn on the option. We can adjust the effects. If you need Outline mode, it's here as well. I show you this based on the red color so we can see the changes easier. You can adjust the width of the lines too. Depending on what you need, you can also use the background option which makes everything else that is not an outline the color you will specify. Lastly, I want to show you the display options that are an integral part of the workflow in 3D. We have lit now, we have a real-time preview of all materials and lights. If you want a faster display, a wireframe or clay model will be perfect. It all depends on what we need it for. Now let me show you how quickly you can create animations. You will be shocked. For this, I will use the scene from Scene Express. Firstly, I would like to add some people walking through the pedestrian cross. We'll use the path tool for it. 
We can do the same with vehicles and animals, by the way. Let's add the dynamic only filter. And let's add some walking people. Characters are chosen and we can draw a path. Similarly, as we did for hedges. After that, we can go to the top view so you can see the adjustments we can do. Here we can add or delete characters from the path. We can also change density so how many people are on the path. Changing the path width is also helpful. Plus, we can change the direction of the crowd. Now let's add some animated particles like fallen leaves, for example. We can position the leaves and that's it. Plus, we can do some adjustments like lifetime, range, particle size, quantity and velocity of the leaves. Anyways, I will show you how to create animation in D5. Click this icon here. Now let's create a final keyframe. We can, for example, move the camera closer to the building, add the scene and add the camera again. We can change the interval to custom here. Here we can change the length of this shot, let's say 6 seconds. Okay. Now we can preview how it looks. Good, I'm ready to render. We can create more shots and they all be saved in the animation panel. In the end, we need to set up a few settings and that's it. We can render directly or if we have more shots, we can add them to the render queue. I choose the second option. We can choose the shots we want to render. Eventually, change the location and that's it. Hit the render button and go for a great coffee. Here is the results of the 10 seconds animation. For this animation, it took 53 minutes and 47 seconds to render on my computer. It is around 10 seconds per frame. I have never rendered animation as quickly. Taking into consideration that this is not the best computer to work in real time, the times are amazing. But I imagine it can be even better. D5 Benchmark can help you get a clear idea of how your computer should work with D5. For this reason, I really recommend trying D5 Render for 3ds Max, not only to get real-time experience, but also because of the speed. It's amazing how fast you can get the outputs there. Plus, D5 is pretty easy to use, which makes creating visualizations and animations a piece of cake. I would say that the biggest advantage is that you can download D5 for free and check it by yourself. Don't take my words for this, but give it a try and share your results with us. Bye-bye!